Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with um, my monthly Muse video for the month of September. As you can see from my table, I have been busy doing something that did not go well. Um, it's not supposed to look like this. <laughs> Let me first say that I saw this, um, I saw this video, and I will um, put the link down below where the idea came from that I first saw. I'm sure, I, as a matter of fact, I know this has been around a very long time, but I've only recently seen it in the last month. I don't know what rock I was under while this was going on. This idea is to make, um lasting things, lasting cocked items to use on paper. And I'll show you what I mean, but first let me say that this <laughs> chop suey here is um, me picking all the caulking out of a mold that I thought I could use to make uh, the acrylic impression. These are meant for fondant. They came from the, um, let me back you out. They came from the cake decorating section at Michael's when I was on vacation a couple weeks ago. And I love them for jelly printing. And I did use them for jelly printing. So I thought, well, you know, if it, it does well for jelly printing, I can slather the stuff on there. Uh, no. <laughs> so I had a set of three. I did it on this side and I spent two and a half hours picking it out this morning at oh dark 30. Um, this one I picked out a little bit yesterday but I think I'm going to need a heavy duty brush to dig out all those little nooks and crannies there. Thank God I didn't do it on the other side either. Whew. And this one is a work in progress. <laughs> Hence <laughs> the confetti on the table. So what you start with is you buy now, I bought DAP because that's what I saw everybody else use. And yes, this is a um, caulking gun. And yes, this is caulking. You buy a caulk that has silicone and latex in it. Uh, it comes where I went. It came in colors. But all I wanted was white so I could see what I was doing. I started out, my very first one was clear. And I could not see diddly about what I was doing. So I had to go back again and buy the white. Now, it comes in a tube, which my little local hardware store did not carry, so I had to buy the cock gun version. When you snip the end off of it, there is no cap to put back on again, so I had an old um, Aline's glue cap, and I need to clean it out, again, clean it out, dig it all out, but I put it on the end because when you squeeze, you think you're just going to squeeze out a little bit. No, it keeps giving and giving and giving, and it just makes a pile of latex, uh, latex stuff, and then you can't stop it. It's the pressure. Even one click just goes nuts. So to preserve what I was doing and not let the tip dry out, and it will dry out even though you put the cap on a little it will dry out just a teeny bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch. This is what, hang on, let me, I'm trying to get it off the paper till I squeezed it on. You know, that little dab was like buggered up in the end of it. So, all right, so this is what I, like I said, I use dap. It has to have silicone and latex. Don't buy anything else. It needs to say latex plus silicone. All right. The reason why is because what you do this with are silicone um, molds, and these are meant for fondant and cake decorating, and I guess you people use resin and all kinds of stuff in them. I ordered this. No, I did not. I bought this in Hobby Lobby, and it's very intricate, and I'll show you what comes out of it. And then I bought this one because I thought, wow, you know, this will be really cool. It's so big. And what I've ended up using is this piece. I mean, I have done the big one, but it's a beast to undo. And then the other side. So there's like matching ends here. So there's, there you go. There's that one. So I started out with these two. I bought a leaf mold and I don't like it, but I do still have it. Then being the rocket scientist that I am... <laughs> bought these. 
These are made for imprinting on the fondant, not for uh, the mold type stuff. I will get these completely clean and then strictly use them for jelly printing because I can see already this ain't going to work. So there's that. While I was at Michael's, I bought these, which are silicone molds. Again, they are for candy making, that kind of stuff. Now, I squirted this in a day and a half ago. I'm not sure it's dry, but I'm going to peel it out right now in front of you, and let's see what a... Ah, beautiful. It, the reason you use caulking with silicone and latex in it is because if you use just latex, it will not peel out and be as, as wonderful as this is about to be, I hope. My fingers crossed. Um, and you need to make sure you have both those ingredients in it because you're using silicone molds and silicone with silicone just glues it together. So let's see if I can get this out. You have to, when it's dry, it'll kind of, let me put you in closer. It will kind of peel itself out, but you have to put something underneath it. I've seen so many methods on how to get this out. Oh, I'm loving this. And then you can save these little pieces or you can get rid of them. I don't plan to use them. So they will come out. But I'm, I'm so thrilled with the way it looks because I struggled with this yesterday for hours. It's like um, buttering toast, only way more messy for me. I've seen other people, their stuff looks perfect. Mine does not look that way. I'm a beginner. Give me a break. <laughs> and you know me, I always go off half-cocked and then realize, oops, should have followed the directions. All right, so... I'm going to fold this up so I can peel the end piece out. Some people will lay it flat and take a toothpick and kind of dig it out. You know me, I'm not a delicate girl. I'm like fumble fingers. Oh man, this took a day and a half, two days to dry. All right, so I'm going to take these out because I don't want these. And I'll show you why in a minute. All right, so there is my piece. Now I will trim off some of the leftover, you know, the goo on the ends. Yes, it's dry, but I don't want it to appear on what I'm about to make. So, nice flat surface here, and I don't care this is not flat. This is not the part I'm using. So there's this one. And then I have all these little doodads to deal with. And then I'll clean up the mold, because uh, basically this stuff will just kind of, you can take your fingernail or soft toothbrush and just kind of back it off of here. No big deal, right? Okay, so we'll save that one. Let me put this aside. And then I did this one yesterday also, and this is going to be just like this chevron. This one's going to have pieces that I'm going to have to pop out, and I will use these. All right, let's see how well we did. The thicker you put it on, the more days it's going to take for it to set up. Like basically one to three days. Uh, the little mold, the little pink silicone mold, that I showed in the beginning, it just takes overnight or, you know, sometimes around a few hours. Okay, so this did not go well here, so let me stick my fingernail there. All right, so basic what I'm, I'm undoing is this part here. I'm not worried about these right now. I just want the basic design of this. This is a technique that's been around a long time, evidently, and I'm the last to see it. <laughs> last to get on the boat. All right, so that you just need to be slow and kind of deliberate in where it is you pull and where you put pressure so that you don't rip your mold. And basically, this is um, a mold. Or at least that's how I'm going to use it in a, in, in, a, in a video. All right, so I like this. And again... I don't care this isn't smooth because that's not the part I care about. And I will clean up the edges because I do care the edges don't look so sloppy. But I care about this part here that's nice and smooth because this is the part I'm using. So there's that. And then I can use these guys as a, what do they call it, assemblage? I don't know. Fancy word for gluing stuff on other stuff. 
right there's that so I'm gonna peel all these guys out and I can use these and I, I'm excited because I get two see there it's not quite dry right here it left a little residue so like I said these guys need to dry a little longer mm -mm. yeah it's a little damp there um, they the thick like I said the thicker it is the longer you have to dry it see there are places that are sticking to the mold. This means it's not dried all the way. So I'm going to leave this and let it dry for a few more hours. And then I will pull this the rest of the way apart. So let me set these aside. And let me clean this mess up and I'll be right back. Okay, so let me back you out. Might I suggest, which was suggested in the video that I saw, that you not do this on a mat you care about. Cover it up with paper because this stuff will adhere to every surface known to man and it is a beast to get off of your um, mat and it will ruin your lovely mat thank goodness these are ten dollars at Walmart and it can easily and cheaply be replaced but do it on newspaper or something you don't care about but not your mats because you absolutely will ruin your mat like I have done mine <coughs> okay so there's that lesson number two <laughs> so these are what I have done over the last month I've been playing around with this this one the one I showed you with the pink whoops see this how intricate it is this is this let me turn it over this way there we go Isn't that nice I just love it. And I've made more than a few of them. And they all turned out pretty well. There's a couple of little broken places, like there's a little broken heart on the end here, but I can mash it down on what I'm using it on and it won't really matter. Uh, this is one of the ones from the larger one that I showed. The little flourish. And then here is the opposite side of the flourish. So I have those to do. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? More flourishes. And what else? Oh yeah, and then here's the granddaddy. Boom, boom, boom. This has been wound up in here, and if I want it to lay down flat, I can kind of heat it up with the heat gun, but don't get crazy. And there's the big one that I did that's part of, you know, where these guys were... Here and here on the mold. This, it, it takes a little bit of strategic placing, you know, and get it to lay down flat when you want to use it. And as I said, I bought um, some leaf molds that I don't really like. That I don't think they're going to work well for me for what I want to use them for. I tried already and they don't they don't work for what I want them for. But these would be great if you want to paint these and glue these on a journal or a book as part of the cover. They're just tons and tons of little leaves. Different, you know, they're very tiny little leaves. Like that. Wait, let me go. I need to bring you in closer. Yes, yes, closer lady. All right, there we go. So there are the leaves. Um, for these, they don't work because I need them to be flat on the top, and I didn't get them flat because I lay them upside down. And these are not flat. They're a little bit concave, so these will not work for what I want them to work for, but they peel out of the mold beautifully. Um, something else that was suggested in the video is you try doing this with paper. So... I took apart a paper flower that someone gifted me. Where's the other part? Is that it? Yeah. And wait, here was the, this was the big, I think this was the bigger part of it. And then this was in the middle and this was like this. So I took the flower apart and used the layers to do what I wanted to do with them. Let me go back out again. Sorry, I'm going in and out because I, I want to make sure you see the detail of things. And a uh, canvas court used to sell, the old Canvas Corp, used to sell the, um, I don't know what you call them, they're, they're like 
Oh shoot! I'll show you a picture of them. anyway. So this is one of them, and I did, and it's stick. It was stick a sticker, and I stuck it on the corner of something, and used this instead of doing the silicone. This worked pretty well. So here are all the things that. Oh yeah, where's the other one? Oh, here we go. And then I found these in some of the stuff that was gifted to me, and I tried these. So now I'm going to show you the results of what I got. Let me go get them. Okay, so I went through my pile of paper and tried to pick out ugh, examples of, you know, the stuff I just showed you. So I've been experimenting with the forms. This is the granddaddy. This is this piece. Boop, 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 boop. That's this piece right here. And the impression it leaves on paper when you do it like that. I, this paper is cut down for a specific journal, so that's why you don't see the very ends of it. So that's one side, and then there's the other side. The impression on this side was not as good as this side. And I would like for it to be more white, and since I'm a beginner, I'm slowly getting there. That's a little too white. But, you know, it adds a little interest to the paper. So there's that one. Here are the flourishes from that same set. There's one flourish that had too much paint on it. Here's one that did okay, except for in certain places. But it still adds interest. And then I flipped it over and did the same thing. And this was a miserable failure on this side. This one, eh, not as great as I would like for it to be. All right, so then I did it with coffee dyeing, and I was so excited. Look how well they turned out. It even shocked me, I have to say. I, I was very pleased with the way they look. I'm very happy, except for there's one drawback, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then tried it on this side, and it did, you know, measured results on the other side, but I really love this side. They look so awesome. All righty, so I tried it with this one. And I can't tell you what day this was or what order I did them in because I did like a hundred sheets of paper. It took me like three or four days of, well, the camera's like acting funky. Um, it took me three or four days to do this. So here's the little flourishes on this side again with the blue paint. Hard to see and basically nothing on the other side. This was using two tones of color and the little flourishes. Not bad. Not horrible. Not great, but not horrible. Then these are, there's the little pink mold, the little soft silicone pink mold one. Uh, where'd I put it? Boom, boom, boom. Shoot. I moved it. Okay, anyway. So that's the little, that's these. So I had to do more than a t at a time. So I said one here and then I did one here. And when you do stacks and stacks of trays of paper to dry and you want them to all have these, you need to make lots of these. So I've been in the process every day since I have one mold. I've been doing it every day, making more of these so that I can do more pieces of paper at a time. So there's those. And I'm about to show you the drawback. Well, let me show you the rest of these first. Here's more coffee dyeing with the little pink silicone mold one. Um, this, the only reason it's like this is this is a, a leftover from this side. I did not do it on this side on purpose. That's that. And then this. I wanted to accentuate it a little bit so the paper was dyed and then I added the silicone mold onto it or the little silicone thing on it and then dabbled paint on it. I, I'm not sure how crazy I am about the way it looks, but you know, live and learn. And see, it makes the back side look funky. After you paint this side, it leaves, you know, that kind of cloudy look on the other side. I'm not crazy about the way it looks on the back side, but you know, live and learn. Um, Here's another one with the green where, oh yeah, I wanted white. Uh, not this white. And there's that one. And I like the soft, subtle one on the side, and this one not so much. And here again, the video that I saw, her the woman's stuff was a lot of white, which I don't want stark white, but it is a little interesting in the back side is like, eh, not my fave. 
All right, this is with those little paper strips. They work really well. I, surprisingly enough, I think they look very cool. And then the, the little bleed through on the back, which I really don't care about for this one. But I do like the way it looks on the front. All right, here's that little piece from Canvas Core that was sticky. And I stuck it on there and did it. And here's one of those paper pieces for that flower I took apart. If you have something that's sticky, you get a more pronounced print. The sticky had kind of worn off here and kind of worn off there. But the first, the top two, I thought they looked really wonderful like this. This was not, I should have put something heavy on it so that the impression would be better. But then look at the back sides. Cool, huh? I like that. All right, so here's another one that I did with the paper, the paper flower that was cut in half. And then there's the halves of the other two. And it bled through on the other side, and this almost did next to nothing. It made a blotch. Again, with the, oh, this is the large piece of paper I did with the, the flourishes. There's a purple. I don't like the white. It's too much white. And this is the one I did with the leaves, and that's why I don't like this. It's not defined enough. I mean, I can draw them in, but that wasn't the point of doing this because I didn't want to draw. I just wanted to leave impressions. So these do not work for what I want to use them for. So I'll find some other way to use them. Then I got nuts, more nuts than usual. And I had a paper plate bottom from Dollar Tree that I cut. Let me see if I can find it here. Here it is. I cut the outside of the paper plate off. I saw this idea from Carlet Cage Fish. Let me back you out. And what I did was I took the flat part and tried to make it as flat as I could on here and then kind of blotted my paint on there and, and laid something on top of it so it would be flat. And it left a really great impression. And I'd use two different colors on purpose so that I would be able to see this in the middle. I really love this. This is great. All right, so I'm going to show you why some of these are not the way I want them to be. Let me start with the folded ones. All right, so I'm going to fold these in half. So I wanted a little design on the ends. But I forgot I had to cut the paper down. Hence the one with the ends chopped off <laughs> because I forgot the paper, the the book it's going in was not the half of the eight and a half by 11 sheet. So you end up cutting off some of it. So when I put it through the paper cutter, I had to make sure when I had, excuse me, when I cut the length off, I put it this way in so I could cut the length off and not screw around with the design. That doesn't work so well on these. Uh, you can't avoid cutting into your impression here. So this will have to go in a larger journal because I don't want to mess up the stuff I did on the side. This one, I can accommodate and, you know, do it this way and then cut the top off because I did these right here. And that's the back side. So, you know, that's why folding them in half and doing the flourish like that and doing them so close to the edge here, if you're planning on cutting the paper, you probably should cut your paper to the journal you're going to use it in first then place your flourishes or your latex stuff on there and do it that way instead of it being an afterthought because look at the difference. That's how much I had to cut off of my stuff to get it to work in the journal I'm going to use it in. So, I have tons and tons of pieces of paper like this that I did all kinds of this stuff to. And I really enjoyed it. And I learned so much from making mistakes that I plan on making more mistakes later. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is my muse for the month of September. I thought you'd like to see the outcome. And I really, really do like this. Let me show you where it's going to go. This is a, I can't even tell you what piece of cardboard this used to be, but this is Gina B. Aaron's stencil on some drop paper. And I liked it so much that I use it for my book cover. And I have three signatures that are going in here. They've already been cut to size. Well, 
you know how I, I just, I go crazy. I get a little overboard. <laughs> Nothing on this one. And there's one of the large ones where I cut it off. Again, a large one where it was cut off. And this time I did it upside down, upside down on the bottom. This one was done with, um, I was gifted these wonderful leaf stamps by Carla at Cage Fish. And I decided to do these when I was dyeing the paper. So I laid them on top of the paper overnight. And this is what I ended up with. Aren't they great? Those are not stamped. I love them. I just love the way they turned out. Look at that. Now these were, were stamped on here after I, before I dyed the paper, I put these on and it was a uh, residue, stamped them on here, then did the coffee dye afterwards. Or maybe I did coffee dye first and then stamped these on. I don't remember. But I love the way they turned out. They left great, great impressions. So there's that one. Uh, what's in here? I don't think I have, do I have any in here? Oh yeah, I do. I love these. I did them towards the middle of the book. This one has the granddaddy here, and I love this impression. Again, it could be right side up, or it could be upside down. It's up to you. But I did cut some of it off because I forgot when I did this that, that all that paper, the size was not going to be, uh, after I dyed all the papers, I went and pulled this out, went to fold them in half. I was like, oh, oh no. Should have measured first. You know, live and learn. You know me. Jump first, ask questions later. All right, and then there is another one with the leaves, with her stamps. They're fabulous stamps. If she still sells them, you should go to her, or her um, YouTube channel and look at how, uh, she's got videos on how to make your own stamps like that. I don't think... Oh, yep, there's one right there. There we go. So, be smart. Don't make the same mistake I did. Measure your paper that's going into your journal first. Then do all the fancy dye stuff so that when you get done, you're not cutting your design off the edges. You may cover this up, or you could leave it the way it is, or put a little image here close to this, whatever you're going to do. But just make sure you don't cut all that hard work of drying your stuff. Um, be sure you're not cutting it off. Like I cut some of the leaves off, which I almost broke out into tears over. <laughs> I get emotional over my paper. Anyway, so this is my muse for the month of September. I hope you enjoy this and learn something. Please try this. This is a great thing to try. When this dries, I will be popping the rest of these out. And what I will do is, when I measure my paper first, I will pop these out. Oh, there's one. Pop them out and then lay them strategically on the paper. Uh, nope. I will lay them strategically on the paper so that I have a design on here. All right. I will link a bunch of videos or a bunch of places for you to go to look for everything that I talked about here. So please try this. It's so much fun. And... The only drawback to doing this is it's a really long word that starts with a P, and that's the word patience. Sad but true. All right. So please like, share, subscribe. Leave me a comment. If you want to see more of how to do this, you let me know, and I will be happy to show you in more detail. It's kind of messy, but it's a lot of fun. All right, guys. See you next month. Bye-bye.